Coffee break finished two minutes ago. Come on. Sorry, Mr. Foster. Where's Izzy? Uh, Mrs. Connor goes in the afternoon, huh? Oh, well, it must have been important, seeing as we're trying to get a vital order out. It was. Peter, can I help you? Only by dropping dead. Something wrong? Uh, no, no. I just wondered if you could pick Si up from school. adri has got an extra shift at work, and I've got the uh, I've got the accountant coming. So, don't let me stop you. Look, if uh, if it's a problem. Then... Actually, while you're both here, maybe you'd like to reconsider my offer of buying you out. Give you a lot more time to play happy families. I don't even like breathing the same air as you, Frank. So doing something that would actually please you. It's not going to happen. Just get me going. Do you know what? I can't get out of my head. Mum. Well, you don't even remember her. Yeah, but Dad always told us what happened. She resented us. We got in the way of having a good time. I don't think it was as simple as that. She couldn't cope, so she ran off. How simple do you want it? What she couldn't cope with was having a disabled kid. Yeah, but I'm taking after her, aren't I? Yesterday, all I wanted to do was go and get away and never come back. You're nothing like her. She had loads of support, everything. She was still too much for her. You're in this mess because you wouldn't ask for help. Wouldn't admit you were struggling. Yeah, but it doesn't help that when times got tough, I ran. I couldn't hack it, as Dad would say. Forget about Dad. He's chess and jaws if you should be worrying about. Yeah, but you know what he's like. It'll be on my case every second of every day. I don't think I can go back, is it? Of course you can. What else are you going to do, eh? Tell Chaz I'm sorry, yeah? Katie! Katie, don't be silly, Katie! Do you think I should buy her something? Like as an apology? She likes chocolates? No way. Because then she'd accuse you trying to make a fat. And then you wouldn't fancy her. And then you'd go off with other girls. What? Mm hmm. That's with the car you get a manual. Yeah. Oh, there she is. I'll make myself scarce. Oh, yeah. Uh, about yesterday, nothing happened. You can ask Tommy. Peace off, Sir? It's from the stash. Eh? <laughs> you got a stash of chocolate. Well, I have cravings. It's almost mandatory. Middle of the night, as soon as you've gone out or come to the Louvre. <laughs> you sly devil. <laughs> oh, well, we can blame it on the baby. Totally. <laughs> Listen, up about earlier. I'm sorry. No, you were right. I shouldn't have gone out. My ex, Dominic. He'd say he was going out with his mates. He wasn't. Everyone knew what he was like except for me, so... Don't worry. We don't. Clean slate, right? From now on, we both trust each other. Deal. <laughs> Except for chocolate. Uh. Oh, Tina. Have I upset you? Mm, no. Why? Just this morning you seemed a bit funny with me. Again? No. Fine. Right. Well, look. If if I have, can I buy you a? Oh yeah. Oh. Hi. Hi. I was just um just passing. I tried texting you, but the number you gave me, it, it didn't work. Really? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Hi, I'm Tina. I live with Tommy. As in, we, we share a flat? Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Sorry. So, was that the number you gave me, or...? Oh! <laughs> Look, you've got the uh, the one and the nine the, the wrong way around. Right. <laughs> I was just wondering if you, um, if you fancy going for a drink sometime. Sure. Sure. Um, tomorrow night? Come to the Bulbers. I work there. Right there. Right. Okay. Well, I'll see you then. Yeah. Oh. Aww. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. see ya. You gave her the wrong number. I'm just surprised you gave her your real name. Before. No, don't get used to it. Any tips? 
Make sure you pick the right kid. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> oh, here he is. Where's my dad? Well, he asked me to come and pick you up. I'm not going with you. Get off me! Everything all right? I'm not going with her. She's not my mum. Peter asked me to collect him. You're not on the list of approved. You know who I am. Uh, but even so, uh, school policy. Listen, if you've got a problem, take it up with Peter. I'm... I want my glass. Yes, I'm taking you to him. He could stop at after school club and tell no, Peter. No, it's really okay. Fine, man, come on, stop showing me up. I want my glass. Right, here you go. Can I go to Grandma Deidre's and have some proper food? Hey, that is proper food. Grandad says you don't get proper food out of the microwave. No, oh, Grandad didn't write about everything, sweetheart. Yes, he does. Grandma says he's a proper know-it-all. That means he knows everything. Yeah, well, Daddy's got the real cooker. And he won't let us use it. I'll make you something nice tomorrow, Angel. So, you got a job yet? Oh, well, I would have done. If it wasn't for that troll you used to go out with. Who are you on about? Uh, Beth. Why was she done? Peter had offered me a job until she started winding me up. She reckons you've got the hots for her. My heck. Well, she is planning a reunion downstairs. I don't think so. Anyway, if your own brother won't even give you a job, then you've got a problem, haven't you? Uh, no. We've got a problem. Unless you increase my maintenance to cover the mortgage, that is. What, you want me to pay you to pay me? In a word, yeah. Here you go, buddy. This will make a welcome change. Oh, yeah? You giving me money, 200 quid. That's, uh, it's not stamped there. Yeah, you took the bet yourself, yesterday. You remember, Carla came in the shop and she was kicking off about Frank. You had the slip in your hand, you took me money, but obviously you didn't stamp it. Well, that's up to you to check. I don't have a copy. Oh, Peter. You must remember, mate, we even had a conversation about why I were in your shop. Now, look, I can't pay out if it's not stamped, Carl. What can I say? There you go. No, not again. What's, uh, what's going on? Oh, ask him. You made a right show me in front of the headmaster, all the other parents. You said you'd pick me up. Yes, well, I was busy. I don't want her to come for me. I don't even like you. Mick, you serious about not paying up? Uh, yes, I'm serious. You'll regret this battle. Big time. Right. Let's get to the bottom of this then, shall we? So what have you been in? Not since lunchtime. Oh. I'll get this. What? Kylie, David's wife. I was in the salon yesterday. I reckon you've spent all your money on flowers. Oh, right, yeah. Things didn't go as well as I hoped. David's wife. Shouldn't you be throwing drinks over me rather than buying them? <laughs> well, consider it a thank you. I'm not public enemy number one anymore. Oh. I can imagine being Gail's daughter-in-law. It can be kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm ashamed to say that all the stories you've heard about me are actually true. No wonder David kicked off. Yeah, but in my defense, I could have taken Audrey for every penny she had and didn't. Why not? Well, the same reason I came back and for the flowers. I do really rather care for her. Any movement on the Tommy front? Oh, yes. Her name's Jodie and her surname's One Night Stand. If that's the way you want to treat women, I'm better off out of it. You know you don't mean that. When we were living with Tyrone, everything was fine before Kirsty turned up. She hated me. Two women under the same roof who don't get on. Mm, World War Three is just a borrowed lipstick away. Tommy was dead supportive. Brave man. It can't be all that bad. Evening, Brian. A pint of liquid relaxation, please. Right. Bad day. Big mistake, moving into the school's catchment area, always on duty. Talking of which, Mrs. Platt. Hi. A word about Max's lunchbox. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, actually. Crisps, chocolate, a drink with more ease than a game of Scrabble. And your problem is? Uh, it's against school policy. Healthy food only. It's the cornerstone of my new initiative. If I give him carrots and lettuce, he'll not touch it. Well, it must be a middle ground. You can stuff your middle ground. He's my son. Well, if that's your attitude, I'm afraid there will be sanctions. Sanctions? Is Max causing trouble at school? No, he's very well behaved. So his dad isn't causing any adverse effects? Well, no, but... I think Mrs. Platt will consider your policy, but giving her a lecture while standing there with a rather less than healthy drink in your hands does seem to me to be a bit rich. <clears throat> well, I think I've made my point, so we shall leave it at that, shall we? Fair enough? Absolutely, old man. <laughs> what? 
Thanks. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> she just don't think she can cope. Well, help her. I'll do anything, everything. You think I didn't tell her that? You should have convinced her. I'm sorry. I know it's not your fault. It's okay. Why didn't she come back? She can't face anyone. But I'm not anyone. Well, she misses you and Joseph. What if she's finding it that hard? Why didn't she just say something? Well, the first time any of us knew she was finding it tough, my dad goes off and mum wanted to take the baby off her. Okay, yeah. I'm guilty as charged. Guilty of turning out my daughter who's clearly out of her depth. I mean, what's wrong with that, eh? <sighs> I have just been drinking with the most gorgeous man. Don't get your hopes up, I'm not running off with him. Oh. Does this heartthrob have a name? Lewis. That is not remotely funny, Carla. And I am not remotely joking. He's lovely. Why does it not surprise me that those two get on so well? Can somebody please explain what I'm missing here? He's sorry for all the things he did and wants to make it up to you. What's wrong with that? I risk being made a fool of all over again. And what's the alternative? She's hardly beating men off with a stick. Actually, I am quite content the way things are, thank you. Who are you kidding? When you're with a fella, you look and act ten years younger. There's a spring in your step, a twinkle in your eye and silk in your knicker drawer instead of thermals. That is no reason why she should let a con man, a proven liar, back into her life again. Okay, Audrey. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Gail. Listen to your heart. And think where that's got you in the past, ma'am. Listen to your head. Pointing fingers isn't going to do any of us any good, is it? What we need to do is work out how we're going to get Katie to come home. I'm not... I'm not trying to upset anybody here, love. You don't usually have to try. Bottom line is, Katie now realises that the, the, the whole baby thing was a big mistake. Oh, I'm not listening to this. Now, you know I'm right, lad. Now, I still think the best idea is I, I get a nanny. <laughs> now, listen, and, and little Joseph here stays with me. Oh, Dad, not this again! That way, Katie can do what she always wants to do, which is go back to school, you know, be a teenager, or whatever. Who the hell do you think you are? Katie's father! And I don't want her to ruin her life any more than she has done, all right? What about my life? Joseph's? I don't want him being brought up by some stranger and old man, neither does Katie. Yeah. I'll look after him until Katie comes back. Yeah, well, if you've only shown you can't manage that, I mean, that's why she ran away. Katie ran away because of you. And she won't come back because of you, Owen. Dad, she told me. She can't bear you watching her, judging her. I'm trying to help here! You don't want to help, you want to control. Here. Yeah. Take a good look at him, because it's the last time that you're going to be this close to him. We don't want you in our lives. Not me, not Joseph, and not Katie. Get out of my way. Just calm down, all right? Please. I am calm, and I'm deadly serious. You know, I'm a hostage negotiator. They had a British Hindu family held captive. These two kidnappers and the son is on board. That's all very good, but I am in I'm charge. I'm to help you. you. Get off my square! Me. Dominic King is back. The new series of Kidnap and Ransom is next. Coronation Street is sponsored by Harvey's. Feel good furniture.